So this is a case of bilateral post-LASIK ectasia. And this is a very desperate patient. And this is why. He just couldn't see anything. He underwent a cross-linking in both eyes a couple of years ago to halt the progression of the ectasia, and this was successfully achieved. However, he was left with a terrible uncorrected visual acuity, and uh, he wouldn't get any better with this ridiculous refraction, a very high cylindrical correction, and even with that he wouldn't pass 2050 and a very blurred vision. He could not co tolerate contacts. This was already discussed and exhaustedly discussed, and this is out of the table at this moment. He is considering DALK, and, uh, and if we take a closer look here, we can see that his uh, his topographic astigmatism is matching his refractive astigmatism, both in magnitude and axis. So here we decided to take a different path. Instead of trying to fix the cornea, we decided to leave the cornea no alone and perform an intraocular procedure. So this is a lens-based treatment for a corneal problem. So in this moment, he had no significant cataract. He had a clear lens. So we performed a clear lens extraction with a high cylinder toric IOL, a 12 diopters toric IOL, plus a pinhole implant piggyback. So this is the surgery. Here we can see the, this very high stigmatism here. <clears throat> And uh, we performed a 2.2 millimeter corneal incision, and we we performed our routine lens surgery here with a manual capsular axis, and 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 pretty much everything went uh, as normal. And uh, so here we are using a Zeiss high cylinder 12 diopters of tericity. And we are implanting in the this lens inside the capsular bag, and uh, it is made of a hydrophilic acrylic, and it's been dialing, it's been dialed to the the proper position. And here's the moment of truth. We're using the extra focus pinhole implant made by Morcher. We're using the D cartridge of the Monarch injector, and uh, this is just a pinhole implant. It has no refractive power, only a 1.3 millimeter aperture within this 6 millimeter occlusive portion. So here we noticed that one haptic was in the sulcus, the other one was in the bag. So we inflated the bag because we wanted everything placed inside the capsular bag together with the IOL. And this was achieved uh, with relatively ease. So this is the eye at the end of surgery. And the day after, the patient reported a, an incredible vision. He could see 2025 J2 uncorrected the day after. He said that the sharpness was pretty much equivalent to the rigid context that he tried. This is, a, this is very interesting. The black acrylic of the pinhole is transparent to infrared. So here with an infrared camera mounted on the slit lamp, you can see the toric marks behind the black implant. So we were checking here to see if the, the, IOL, the, the, the toric IOL was in place, and it was indeed. So our take home message is here in this case. Number one, post LASIK ectasia can be a very good indication of a pinhole implant, especially in those cases with a large pupil diameter. Number two, Always aim for the best possible refractive outcome when we're dealing with a lens surgery. Although we all know that the pinhole may be able to forgive or to minimize or to correct a small amount of regular astigmatism, when we're dealing here with a high magnitude regular astigmatism or somewhat regular astigmatism, a toric IOL is pretty much mandatory in those cases. So here we use the, uh, the, the highest cylinder available in a toric uh, IOL. Number three, when we're doing a lens-based treatment for a corneal problem, 
it is absolutely mandatory to have a documented topographic stability. Otherwise, this would not last long. The result would not last long. And it would even make the, the, the final treatment more difficult now that we have a toric IOL in the eye. In this case here, we had a, a two-year follow-up before the surgery. So we were very confident that the cross-linking was effective and that this uh, corneal ectasia was stable. So number four, longer eyes are more prone to vitreous degeneration and retinal issues. But here I wanna talk more specifically about floaters. So one very important point to discuss with the patient preoperatively is the fact that the floaters may become more visible after surgery. This is true for post-LASIK ectasia, this is true for post-RK patients, and any patient with a longer axial length. All right, so that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. Drop your comments below, and I hope to see you next time soon.